Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a PC component overview slash guide where I kind of walk you through the main components in a computer, discuss what their purpose is, how they work with the other components, and then what you should look for when you're actually purchasing these components. So whether you're buying a PC, building a PC, maybe purchasing a laptop, it's really helpful to understand what each component is, what the role is in the machine, and what's actually going to make a difference in terms of your performance and day-to-day -day use of the computer. So that's the goal of this video. Let's go ahead and get into it after a quick word from our sponsor. Before we dive in, I need to thank LTM Designer for sponsoring this video. LTM Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system that enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. LTM Designer has used 35 years of innovation and development to create a truly unified design environment that makes it the most used PCB design solution on the market. LTM Designer provides an intuitive and powerful interface that lets you design PCBs rapidly while interacting and collaborating with your mechanical designers. The interface provides a photorealistic 3D environment, collaboration and synchronization with tools including SolidWorks, PTC Creo, and Autodesk Inventor, realistic rigid flex designs, multi-board assembly, and much more. LTM Designer is the most popular eCAD tool and electronics design software, and you can get started with it today for free by pressing the link in the description and registering for a free trial. Thanks again to LTM Designer for sponsoring this video, and now let's dive in. All right, so let me begin by just walking you through the main components that every computer is going to have. So in every PC, every laptop, doesn't matter what type of computer you have, you're going to have a motherboard, you're going to have a CPU, that's your central processing unit. You're going to have RAM, which is random access memory. You're gonna have a graphics processing unit. This may be a dedicated GPU, so graphics processing unit, or it may be integrated with your CPU. You're then going to have some type of storage device, so a hard drive or an SSD. And then I just wanna note here that any peripherals, so things like a microphone, a mouse, a keyboard, a monitor, those are not a part of the actual computer. Those are things that are going to plug into the input or output devices of your motherboard and allow you to actually view what's happening on the computer. So I just wanna make that clear, something like your monitor or your screen, even if it's on a laptop, that's not really a part of the actual computer. The computer is simply the components that I just listed. There may be a few other things depending on the build that you have, but those are the main and kind of fundamental ones. So with that said, let's start going through each component. I'll talk about the importance of them and which ones you really wanna look out for when you're actually buying a computer and which ones are gonna make the biggest difference for your day-to-day -day usage. All right, so let's begin with arguably one of the most important components, which is the CPU. Now the CPU is the central processing unit and a lot of people like to think of this as the brains of the computer. This is one of the most important parts. Its speed is really gonna dictate how fast your computer is and it's gonna be responsible for doing all of the arithmetic, all of the math and pretty much all of the heavy lifting of the computer. Now it's gonna utilize all of the other components and it needs those other components to work properly but it is kind of the heart of the PC or the heart of the computer and with a poor CPU, it doesn't matter what other components you have your computer is going to be slow. So in terms of looking out for different CPUs and kind of the properties of CPUs, you're going to have two main brands that you're going to be going to when you're purchasing a CPU or even purchasing a pre-built computer that comes with a CPU. Now that's going to be AMD and Intel. Now recently, AMD has been outperforming Intel when it comes to value for CPUs. So personally, I recommend AMD CPUs. However, Intel does still have a large market share and tons of computers come with Intel CPUs. It doesn't really matter if you have an Intel versus AMD CPU. Some are better at specific tasks, but what you really want to look for when you're looking at a CPU is the specs of the CPU. So the number of cores, the speed of those cores, and then the number of threads as well. Now, when you're looking at a CPU, I would say the minimum amount of cores that you really want to go with in 2021 is four. Now, there is a lot of CPUs that are dual core CPUs. You're going to see these in very entry level machines, very basic computers, maybe even in things like phones. Now, dual core CPUs are fine if you're only doing something like web browsing or word processing. But if you want to play any type of video game, if you want to load multiple applications at the same time, if you want a relatively snappy feel to your PC, you're really going to want to go with at least four cores. 
Now, when you're looking at cores, you're probably also going to see something that says threads. Now, typically the number of threads is going to be double the number of cores. I don't want to get into that because this is kind of a video for beginners, but essentially you don't really need to worry about the threads. Just look at the cores. Almost all modern CPUs have something called hyper threading, which kind of allows each core to perform multiple operations at a time. That's why you'll see something like multiple threads or more threads than the number of cores. Now, other than that, you're going to see a speed for the core. So if you see something like 3.8 gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz, and then you'll see things like turbo clock, boost clock, like all of these kind of marketing things you'll see on CPUs, right? The speed of the CPU is very important, but one thing to note is that just because a CPU has a higher speed does not mean that it's gonna outperform one with a lower speed. For example, if I have a CPU that has six cores and you have one that has two cores, but your cores are clocked at four gigahertz, that's the speed of your CPU. My CPU, even if it's clocked at say 2.5 gigahertz, is going to outperform your CPU in almost every single task. That core speed that you're seeing there is the speed of a single core. So you can kind of multiply the speed by the number of cores, and that will relatively tell you how quick the CPU is going to be. Now, this is not a precise calculation, and in some situations, you do actually want a higher clock speed than the number of cores, especially if you're running single threaded applications. I'm not going to get into that again because this is for beginners, but the idea is for most common people, you're going to favor more cores over a higher clock speed. And most modern CPUs are going to be clocked at at least three gigahertz, which is going to be more than fast enough for you to have a very responsive and kind of fast experience using the computer. All right, so now let's talk about RAM, which is random access memory. Now, RAM is a temporary storage location. Now, this means if you turn off your CPU, anything in RAM is going to disappear. It's going to be gone. Now, the point of RAM is to store data that needs to be readily available to the CPU or the computer so that it can very quickly be accessed and very quickly be changed. So any programs that you're running on your computer will utilize a small amount of RAM, or if you're talking about something like Google Chrome, a large amount of RAM, because they're gonna be storing all of their program data in RAM, so it's very quick to access. Now this is in contrast to something like an SSD or a hard drive, which is gonna be a much slower storage medium, but is gonna be persistent, meaning when you turn off the computer, the data on there is going to stay. It's not gonna be deleted. Anyways, let's talk about what you wanna look for when you're looking for RAM. So RAM has many different forms. You have DDR2, DDR3, and DDR4. And one very important thing to note is that laptop RAM is different than desktop RAM. So you cannot put laptop RAM in your desktop. That's not going to work. So just keep that in mind. I have know many people who have accidentally bought the wrong type of RAM. Anyways, the main kind of, I guess, types or generations of RAM that we have right now is DDR3 and DDR4. Now, DDR3 is a much older style of RAM. That's probably a red flag if you're buying a computer. If it has DDR3, you're going to prefer DDR4, sorry, which has a much higher uh, kind of stock speed. Now, when we're looking at RAM, we have all kinds of speeds, anywhere from something like 2666 megahertz uh, to something like 3200 megahertz or 3600 megahertz. Now, the RAM speed doesn't matter a ton for most of you, but if you are building your own computer, then you want to go with a higher RAM speed rather than a lower RAM speed. Now, ideally, the sweet spot's probably going to be around 32 to 3400 megahertz for your RAM, but for most of you, you're not going to have that option and you're not even going to see that speed if you're buying a pre-built computer. So in terms of the amount of RAM, for most of you, you're going to want either 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, you could get 4 gigabytes of RAM if you're going with a very entry-level computer, but just keep in mind that this is going to be an entry level computer it's going to be slow it's not going to be the most performant so i would recommend as a minimum for most people unless you're really on a budget eight gigabytes of RAM. now 16 gigabytes is going to be the sweet spot this is a really nice middle ground you almost never need more than 16 gigabytes and again for most of you you're going to want that amount now some of you may be saying well can't i get 17 gigabytes the answer is no you need to have a certain denomination of ram it's going to be a power of two so either two gigabytes four gigabytes eight 16 32 64 128 that's just how ram works you'll see some weird computers that have like six gigabytes of ram don't worry about that that's kind of an exception to what i'm saying for most of you again you're going to want either 8 or 16 gigs now if you are doing anything that is going to require more ram you have a really high-end cpu you're doing video editing maybe you're rendering a bunch of stuff then you may want to consider going up to 32 gigabytes of ram and if you're doing machine learning ai a ton of data processing and you need that loaded for your models you probably might want to go up to 64. Now, in my personal computer, I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. I have never needed to use that amount. The most I've probably ever used would be like 32 gigs. And even that 
again, it, like 32 gigs would be completely fine for my computer. Now, one kind of random rule of thumb here that I'm going to throw in is that if you have a very high end GPU, so something like a 3090, a 3080, a Titan, then you're going to want to have double the amount of RAM than your video memory. Now, I'm going to talk about video memory in a second, but if you have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, you're going to want at least 48 gigabytes of RAM, which means you should probably go to 64. I won't talk about all the reasons for that, but just keep that in mind in case you're getting a very high end GPU. So now let's move on to motherboard. Now the motherboard is going to be the bridge or the connection between all your different PC components. So your graphics card, your CPU, your RAM, all of that is going to go directly on the motherboard. And the way they're going to communicate is through the bus on the motherboard. Now, the motherboard is also going to deliver power to the components unless the components have a their own separate kind of power connection. Anyways, the motherboard is important, but for most of you, you're not going to have to pick it out or even look at the specs because it's just going to come with whatever computer you buy. If you are building your own computer, do some research. I'm not going to talk about a ton in this video. It is very important that you pick a motherboard that's compatible with your CPU, your amount of RAM and all of the expansion cards you may want to add and other features like fan headers uh, and like extra USB ports and stuff like that. Now, your motherboard will also have the input and output devices, so it will have USB ports on it. It will have audio jacks. It might have an HDMI or VGA port if you have an integrated graphics card, all of this type of stuff. Uh, anyways, that's pretty much it for motherboard. Again, not super important. Don't worry about it unless you are building your own computer, in which case do some research. All right, so let's go to GPU, which is graphics processing unit. Now, this is very important if you are doing anything graphics intensive, like 3D rendering, uh, video editing, playing video games. If that's the case, you're going to want to get something known as a dedicated GPU. However, if you are not doing any of that, then you can get an integrated GPU. Now, an integrated GPU is built into the CPU, which means you don't have to buy a separate component. It's just already there. Now, you do require either an integrated or a dedicated GPU to get a display output. And the reason I'm saying that is because some CPUs do not come with integrated graphics. So most AMD CPUs do not have integrated graphics, meaning you actually need a graphics card to get some output from the computer. However, most Intel CPUs do, which means that you can just directly plug in a cable to the motherboard and you'll be able to actually see something on your monitor. OK, hopefully that makes sense. Now, I don't want to go through all the different GPU models because there's so many and there's a lot of great reviews out there from people other than me. But when you are buying a computer, the first thing you want to consider is do I need a GPU or do I not need a GPU? Then you're going to look at the different levels of GPUs and depending on what you're doing and the specs of your other components, you're going to pick a GPU. Now, you want your GPU to be balanced with your CPU, amount of RAM and all of that type of stuff. Don't go buy a 3090 if you have a four core CPU. That's unnecessary and you're going to bottleneck this crazy GPU with a very poor CPU relative to the performance of the GPU. All right, so I was just editing this video and I realized I missed some important details in the GPU section. So I just wanted to kind of fill those in here. Now, I do want to give you a treat, though, if you've stuck around until this point in the video. And I'm going to show you that this is my cat. This is Fresca. She's hanging out on the desk right here. She's like always on my desk when I'm working, which is nice, but also quite annoying if I'm trying to type or something like that. Anyways, I just wanted to introduce her in case you guys haven't seen her kind of walking around on the desk in my videos. Regardless, let's now get into those missing details. So GPUs, when you're looking at a dedicated GPU, that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about now. You're going to have two companies that are going to be providing the GPUs, AMD and Nvidia. Now, NVIDIA is kind of the preferred company for GPUs. That's the one I personally recommend just because they're more mainstream. They have lar larger market share and uh, their drivers and all these things are more compatible with more stuff. They have some other cool features like NVIDIA Broadcast, which you can only get access to if you have specific uh, series GPUs from NVIDIA. Now, also, if I'm mispronouncing that, let me know in the comments because I never know how to pronounce that company name. Anyways, let's continue. All right, so AMD, totally fine. If you get an AMD GPU, that's all right. In fact, most Mac computers are going to come with an AMD GPU, and that's because I think they have some special like proprietary partnership. Regardless, those are fine. Now, when you're looking at the specs of a GPU, the first thing you're going to want to look at is the generation of the GPU. So is it first gen, second gen, third gen? Is it a 20 series? Is it a 30 series? You just want to look at how recent it is, and obviously you're going to want to go for the most recent GPU that you can. Now, other than that, you're going to want to look at the amount of video memory. 
Now, video memory, otherwise known as VRAM, is special dedicated memory, very similar to regular RAM, but just for the graphics card. Now, the graphics card is actually going to be responsible for rendering all of your frames. So if you're playing a video game, your video memory is going to act as a video buffer. And what that means is you're going to have all of your frames and everything that you're going to be seeing kind of being stored in the VRAM first and then being passed to the display output where you'll actually see it on the screen. Now, again, take all of this with a grain of salt. It's just an oversimplification to give you a general kind of explanation of what's going on. But essentially, the more video memory, the better. Now, as I said before, you want to have double the RAM of your video memory. So if you have an eight gig video memory card, you want 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is just so you can load uh, the VRAM of the GPU fast enough. If you don't have enough RAM, then it's going to go slower. It's not going to load as fast as it possibly can. OK, so in terms of the amount of VRAM you want, the minimum you're probably going to get is four. Now, in some GPUs, there will be two gigabytes of RAM. That's pretty unnecessary. At that point, you don't even really need a dedicated GPU. But in any GPU that is actually going to do anything meaningful for you, it's probably going to have four gigabytes of RAM. Now, four gigabytes is nice to have if you're not going to be doing any super high res gaming or high settings gaming. Maybe you just want to do a little light video editing. You want like some graphics power. That's where you would go with four gigabytes. But the sweet spot is going to be six, eight or 12 gigabytes. Now, for most people, you're going to be getting a card that has six or eight gigabytes in it. As soon as you start going up to 12 or 24 gigabytes, you're getting into the really expensive high end graphics cards. And at that point, I probably don't need to tell you what to buy. You probably already know what you're looking for. Anyways, those are kind of the details I wanted to add in. Again, I would prefer an NVIDIA GPU, especially if you're going to be gaming. However, if you're just doing some light video editing, you could definitely go with a lower end GPU, like an AMD GPU that has four gigabytes of video memory. Now, it's also very important, again, to look at the generation, the older gen, the GPU, obviously the worse it's going to perform and the less features it's going to have. The new high end GPUs have a ton of awesome features that mo most modern games will take advantage of, say, like ray tracing. If you go with, say, a 10 series NVIDIA GPU, you're not going to have those features. So keep that in mind. You definitely need to do more research on this before you buy a GPU. But hopefully that gave you a few more details because before I felt like I was lacking them. All right. So with that said, I think I'm about ready to end this kind of, you know, random insertion into the video. I will also mention that if you're buying a dedicated GPU and you're building your own computer, consider your power supply because the high end GPUs require a lot of power, sometimes up to, say, 300 watts. So you want to make sure your power supply has the headroom to actually support that. Again, you need to do more research on that if you're actually going to be building a computer. All right. Now we can move on. All right. So now let's talk about persistent storage devices, SSDs and hard drives. Let me start with hard drives. So a hard drive is actually a physical spinning magnetic disk that has a read and write head that is able to read magnetic charges off the disk. That means that first of all, if you bring a magnet near your hard drive, you will erase all of the data because it is magnetically charged. It also means it is a lot slower than a solid state drive because you actually physically need to read um, magnetic bits, right? from the hard drive. Now, I won't get into all of the kind of mechanical aspects of it, but the thing is, this is actually mechanical. You have moving parts, which means it's more prone to failure. But the one advantage of hard drives is they are a lot cheaper and they have a huge storage capacity. So what I usually recommend people do is get one single hard drive as kind of their data drive where they store things like files, images, videos, stuff that they're not loading frequently, because if you're loading stuff like your operating system from a hard drive, it's going to be very, very slow. All right. So lastly, we will end off with SSDs. Now, an SSD is a solid state drive. It's a very fast storage medium, much faster than a hard drive, but is much more expensive and has lower capacity. So what I will say here, just to kind of give you the quick notes, because I'm not going to go through all of the differences between them, is that if you are buying a computer, make sure if it has one drive, it's an SSD. It doesn't really matter what the SSD is. Any SSD is going to be relatively fast. And if you're building your own computer, you can do some research, you need to make sure the SSD is going to be compatible and all of that type of stuff. Now, if you're worried about the amount of capacity that is in your SSD, maybe it's only 256 gigabytes and you think you're going to have more files than that. That's fine. Still get the SSD, load your operating system on the SSD, load your main programs on the SSD, anything that you want to run quickly, then put all of your files, things like videos, photos, whatever, on the hard drive. Anything that you don't want to access a lot or that is kind of just sitting there, it's literally just storage, put it on a hard drive. Anything that you use frequently, like applications, programs, put it on your SSD. Because when you want to load something, you first need to read it from the SSD. It then gets loaded in RAM and then it starts running. 
So if you're experiencing long load times, check if your programs are on an SSD or a hard drive. If it's on a hard drive, that's probably the reason. And if you have your operating system on a hard drive, I feel very sorry for you because your load times are probably 10 times longer than they need to be if you had the operating system on an SSD. Now I could keep going here for hours, but I do need to end the video here. Hopefully this was helpful and gave you kind of a decent introduction to computer components, maybe got you thinking about some of the specs you haven't seen before, or helped you understand some different things and how they work. I could keep going on about this for hours and hours, and I'm sure I missed some important things in this video. If you guys think I missed something, please leave a comment down below. I will try to address it. And if you want more videos on computer hardware, then definitely let me know, and I will make those in the future. With that said, make sure to check out programmingexpert.io slash Tim if you want to learn to code, and I will see you in another YouTube video.